Hallelujah. Open your Bibles up to Matthew chapter 7. Are you ready? Yes. Do we have it? You got our scripture up there, guys? That's all right. We know it. Say this with me. This is my Bible. I live by its truth. I walk in its light. I rest in its promises. I overcome by the faith produced from receiving this seed sown into my heart. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power in our life. Today we will be transformed because your word will be sown into our heart. In Jesus' name, somebody shouted. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. And uh, beginning at verse 24, I'm going to read you out of the New Living Translation this morning. Thirty-one years ago this year, we planted our church. And uh, when we were deciding what would be the name of our church, we chose Solid Rock Faith Center, and this is the scripture that is the foundation for why our church is named Solid Rock Faith Center. Matthew 7, verse 24, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and winds beat against that house, It will not collapse because it is built on bedrock. Anyone who hears my teaching and does not obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Somebody say foundation. Foundation Foundation is important. And through this season right now and everything that's going on, it doesn't matter what it is. doesn't matter if we go all the way back to 9-11. doesn't matter whether you go back to any type of disease, catastrophe, storm, trouble, or trial that comes. There's something that is so important, and that is that we learn how to live by faith through every situation. That nothing moves us off of our faith and our confidence in God, that he will always be who he has declared he is to us. Amen? And he will always come through. So thankful for the word of the Lord this morning. Man, weren't those great words this morning? Hallelujah. Isn't the Holy Ghost awesome? Amen. Hallelujah. So thank God that, that he's a living God, that he has a voice in our life. And so I really want to encourage us, especially as men today, and we've really been focusing. If you haven't joined us on Monday nights, come out for our men's Bible study that we do every Monday night. But God's raising up men. Amen. God is raising up men in this hour. And, and, and God's not against the whole male and female thing. Man, the world has messed something up. Everything the world does is to counteract what God desires to do. Amen. All the philosophies of this world are contrary to the truth of God's word. But God has always looked for men and works through men. Men are to be the leaders. Men are to be the covering, the protection, the strength of the home. Men are to take the spiritual leadership. Could you say Amen. So look with me. We're going to go through this quickly. One of the greatest gifts a father can give to his children, I believe, is a legacy of faith. As men, as fathers, the greatest thing we can give to our kids is to be men of God and men of faith. Over and over in the Word, it refers to the faith legacy of fathers. Like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it is recorded of the glory of the godly kings of Israel that they followed in the footsteps and of their ways of their father David. David was God's righteous king. And, and, and if they followed after him, then they followed in the footsteps says, of their father David. So David left a faith legacy for the next generation to follow. That's what we're called to do. Faith in God was and is to be passed from one generation to another by example. Unfortunately, there are also too many accounts of ungodly fathers and kings. As a result, of their, child, as a result their children had to find their legacy elsewhere. What's interesting is that when you read, especially in Kings, you'll read, and so when there was an ungodly king and he had a child, it doesn't say that he followed in the ways of his father, but he came under the covering of David. So sometimes maybe you didn't have a faith legacy as a young person growing up. Maybe your father didn't do that. But you know, you can start a new generation. You can choose to be the one that sets that legacy for the generations that come behind you. Get this this morning, knowing who you are in Christ, (coughs) excuse me, and living a life that honors God are the ingredients that lead to a legacy of faith. Knowing who you are in Christ and living a life that honors God are the keys ingredient that leads to a legacy of faith. Those two ingredients govern and direct the decisions we make 
and the directions we take in life. They provide our identity and define our purpose. Through our example to our children, they learn how to trust God and rely on his words through every storm and every adversity in life. People are learning right now. People are learning right now and following examples about how to respond, respond to a situation like this. And we're setting an example for our kids. What, oh, oh, my God, what are we going to do? No, just, just hold on to your peace. Amen? Hold on to your peace. Think about this. We teach them through our faith that his word is a rock and a sure foundation that they can build their lives upon. They learn through our example that God's word will always be our source of provision and protection through every storm in life. So let me give you these keys on facing storms in life. Number one, how you start determines how you finish. How you start determines how you finish. It's so important. That's why I said when we planted our church, we named our church Solid Rock Faith Center. We founded Solid Rock Faith Center based on the truth in this passage of Scripture that we read. Building your life upon doing God's Word is the foundation for success. Not coming to church and hearing sermons, that didn't mean anything. I mean, I'm glad you come. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching online, all that stuff. I'm glad you're listening, but listening is not doing. Doing all right? Jesus said, he that hears and does. Not just he that hears. Hearing is not doing. So there has to be that application. I'm going to hear the word. I'm going to do the word. I'm going to live by the word. I'm going to apply the word to my life. Building your life upon doing God's word is the foundation for success. Jesus said that foundation was the key as we read. Every life faces storms. It is the foundation that it is built upon that determines how it will weather those storms. Amen. Everybody's worried about, there, there are many people that are dealing with people get physical reports, health reports, situation reports, economy reports, all those things. We face a myriad of different kinds of storm on a regular basis, not just things like this. Every life faces storm. Foundation is what you do at the beginning. Come on, guys. It's hard to put a foundation under a house once you have the roof on. You know, I need to, it's just hard. I've done that. I've jacked up houses and poured foundations under them and done that stuff. It's a lot easier to pour the foundation first and build the house. Larry, am I right? It's much easier, contractor. It's a lot easier. Say, you go to the contract. Hey, could I start with the roof? Yeah, but this will be a long, tedious, drawn-out, hard, over-expensive project. Yeah. Amen? If we just start from the right foundation and work our way up. Think about it. We decided at the beginning, get this, we decided at the beginning that God's Word would be what we would build our lives and our ministry upon. We were confident then, but we are convinced now. Hear this this morning, that the Word of God is the only foundation that will stand the test of storms. God's Word is the only foundation in your life that will stand the test of storms. You, you, you start, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of convinced, but, but now I'm more confident than ever before. Amen? So that's where we stand. So get this this morning. Every life has a foundation. Every, everybody look up here just for a moment. You have a foundation in your life. Your foundation is your belief system. It's what you believe. There, you know, there's things in here that I don't understand. Next year will be 40 years. Two, uh, 1981, we went in the ministry. This year is 39. Next year will be 40 years that I've been preaching the gospel. There's still stuff in here I don't understand. After all those years, after all those sermons, after all that study, after all that time, there's stuff here I don't understand, but I believe it with all my heart. That's a difference. This is my foundation. I don't have to understand it. Amen. How many have a house? How many have a foundation under your house? How many can tell me how it was put there? Three. How many are just thankful you have a foundation even though you don't understand anything about it? There you go. Are you doing all right? So for us, when it comes to God, we, there, there's so many things in life that we have great faith for. But when it comes to God, we think we have to understand it all. You don't have to understand any of it. You just have to believe it. That's right. You just have to believe it. And your foundation is your belief system. It's what you believe. And when you have storms, when storms come, that's what gets shaken, your belief system. Amen. Your foundation is what gets shaken. 
Every life has a foundation. Storms reveal if it is the right one. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs 10 verse 25 from the New Living Translation says this, When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away. But the godly have a lasting foundation. Glory to God. That's a great verse. Hear that. When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away. But the godly have a lasting foundation. Do you know there are still people trying to get rid of their rice and beans from, from uh, Y2K? How you been? And there are people going through. My daughter said she was in Costco looking at that and, and the other day. And, and, and there, she said there was a guy in there. And I don't mean to, to be this, you know, typical or whatever. I have a Harley. I ride bikes. I do all that stuff. But she goes, man, this guy, she goes, Dad, he looked like a biker guy. He, he, he just big and, you know, and all burly and everything else and sleeveless shirt. And, and he had two, like, 40-pound bags of rice. Like, that guy's ever cooked rice in his life. But it, it, I mean, the, the two didn't look like they went together. How many know what I'm saying? But there are people. So coming soon, rice is going to be anyway, moving right along. What's up with toilet paper? I like what I heard one guy said, man, if you need 80 rolls of toilet paper to survive two weeks, you should have seen the doctor a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. So people go, so because when the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away. People are out there going crazy, spending all kinds of money on excessive stuff, just going bonkered. Wickedness is, is, is driving them into insanity. But listen, but the godly have a lasting foundation. Think about it. In Mark chapter 4, I don't have time to read it, but I just want you to stay this, get this phrase. Storm, in storms, you are not alone. Jesus told disciples, we're going to go to the other side to get in the boat, go the other side. And they were in a storm, but they were not alone. How many know you're not alone right now? We're never alone in the storms of life. You see, storms are a part of life and should never take us by surprise or deter us from our faith in Christ and his word. Trials, problems, challenges, oppositions, and adversity comes to us all. But Jesus said, when the storms come, did you hear that? Jesus said, he that hears my word and builds is a wise man, so that when the storms come, so storms come. He did not tell us how to avoid storm, get this, but rather how to stand and endure and arise victorious through them. That's the hope that we have. People say, people can be in a panic all around you. That's where the revival is going to come from. Because when the world's going crazy, you're just standing on a foundation of peace. Well, aren't you caught up in all this? Absolutely not. I'm just enjoying the view. That's fun. Just fun. Go out and watch crazy. Amen. Amen. And then share the gospel with people. Praise the Lord. So watch this. How, so, so he told us how to be victorious through them. The disciples, when the storms came, the disciples, just go to Mark chapter 4. We have to go there or this won't work. Mark chapter 4. Matthew never reads the same as Mark in my Bible. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. At evening, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side of the lake. What did Jesus say? Okay, so what is that? That's the word of the Lord, right? The word of the Lord said, let's go to the other side. Let's cross to the other side of the lake. Watch it. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although, the other, bo although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm, somebody say a fierce storm. storm. High waves were breaking into the boat and began to fill the water. Jesus was filled with water. Jesus was what? Sleeping. Jesus was what? Sleeping. Jesus was what? Sleeping. You know what Jesus is doing right now? He's seated by the right hand of God. Jesus isn't up anxious pacing in heaven. And do you know where you are right now? You are seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. 
Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. And the disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, peace, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other, even the wind and the waves obey him. Now let me just say that this is not about having faith. I'm going to preach about not having faith. I'm trying to get you to realize who you are in Christ. Amen. Your identity, knowing who you are in Christ. What is your, what you have in God and how to stand in that and how to stay, and, and stay fixed and solid on your foundation in Christ upon his word. Think about it. So there they are. The disciples were more focused on the storm than they were upon what Jesus had said, what he was doing. We must remember that most of these men made their living on the sea. They had seen storms like this before. This was not just a little storm. This was, we read, a fierce storm, the kind that people lose their lives in, and they were acting normal for this kind of situation. Everybody say normal. normal. Let me tell you this. In a pandemic like this, the world is acting normal. Don't be concerned about the world acting normal. That's a normal way. But Jesus didn't come to show us how to live life normally. Are you doing all right? We're not called to live life normal. We're called to live life by walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, and living by the truth of His Word. So this was a fierce storm. But see, without Christ, it would have been hopeless. Okay? If you are acting upon His Word and He is at rest, you should be too. If I'm standing on the word and I understand that Jesus is at rest, then that's what I should be. I should be at rest or I should be at peace. Go with me to John chapter 14, if you would. Listen to this. John chapter 14. And you can write it down. Listen to verse 27. Jesus said this. Powerful. I'm leaving you with a gift. I love this. That's what Jesus, this is Jesus leaving. I'm leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot receive. So you're not going to find peace in the world. Your peace is in him. Are you doing all right? So then it says, so look it. And the peace I give you the world cannot receive. So don't be troubled or afraid. I love it. Now look at John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Glory to God. Amen. That you may have peace in me. Amen. You, you've heard me say that in 2006 when we were building the Lord's gym, I had to go, we had to get insurance for all that stuff. So I had to go have a blood test and, and, uh, for life insurance and that. And, and so they, they uh, took my blood sample. And when they came back, they said, you have hepatitis C. I said, cool. I said, that's all right. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Hepatitis C, that's nothing. I've had bubonic plague and I'm still here. Are, are you listening to me? I did. I had bubonic plague in, in, in 1983. And, and uh, so in that, the reason I said that is I already have a word from the Lord. I was 54 at that time. I'm 67 now. I was 54 at, at, at that time when, when they said you, you have hepatitis C and that. But at 47, I'd received a word from the Lord. Similar to let's go to the other side. Are you listening to me? And the word from the Lord to me was this. I, I pulled up right in front of our church out here and I, was pulling out and I was getting out. And it was just like the Lord shouted at me. He said, 50 to 70 will be your most productive years. And I'm getting, I'm getting out of my car, come in church. 50 to 70 will be your most productive years. I said, well, Lord, I'm 47. Could we start a little early? <laughs> but listen to what the Lord said. So, so, so he's telling you in advance, because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. And so God, God always tells you in advance. And so he said, I, 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 what he's saying is, don't get discouraged. I'm not done with you. This isn't it. You have a, still have a season in front of you. So, so, so when I'm 54, I, I'm like, you're too late. 
I'm in my season with God. This has no effect. This report has no effect upon my life. This has to pass. I refuse to lose my peace because of the prediction of a storm. Are you doing all right? And so in the mid, that's what I'm saying. So how do you stand? You just, you just resolve. This is there. So Jesus says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrow. But take heart. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Glory to God. I'm walking in this world, but I'm not of this world. Do I have any companions in the house this morning? Come on, we are here, but we are not of it. This world no longer has dominion over us. We are walking in the position of dominion in the world. Come on, somebody. That's our position in Christ. Amen. So think about it. If you're acting upon his word and he is at rest, you should be too. If God is not concerned about his word coming to pass, then you should not be either. Get this this morning. Anchor your soul to his word. Let your life and your soul be anchored in the word of God. Never forget that God is the omniscient one, the all-knowing one. He knows what you will go through to get to your destination in him. Never forget that you are here because of obedience to his word crossed over. How did I get in this storm? How did the disciples get in that storm? Because they were obedient to the word of God. When you say yes to God, you'll find yourself in some storm. But the reason you're there is because you said yes yes to God. And if you said yes to God, then he made provision before the storm ever showed up. Oh, what a God. I'm preaching better than you're responding this morning. I'm telling you right now. I hope the people watching are on fire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Watch this. So never forget you're here because of that. Paul said to Timothy, hold on to and fight the good fight of faith by the prophetic word in you and over your life. You see, abiding in his word means maintaining your peace, joy, and faith in the midst of the storms. Hold on to your peace and your joy. We've been teaching the men about the Holy Spirit on Monday night. Do you know the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, temperance, self-control. That's in you. That's God's Spirit in you. His nature in you. Come on, hold on to your peace. Hallelujah. See, if I lose my peace, I'm likely to become irrational, act out of fear instead of faith by way too much toilet paper. Pastor Sue told me that she went shopping the other day, and, and, and we figured out why the toilet paper's gone. Because all the beans were gone off of all the aisles, too. <laughs> all the Lysol's gone, too. How you been? No. <laughs> I have to hold fast to the confession of your faith. And like Paul, look at Paul. Pa- Paul. Paul's so amazing. He's going through all these things. He lists all these things that come against him. And then he makes this statement. Listen to, listen to the statement they make. Paul says, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. What's it take to move you off of your faith? What's it take to move you off of your confidence, your rest, your peace in God? Remember, we're building a legacy of faith based on how we weather storms. I don't know about you. I, I, I want my kids, my grandkids, to see me standing by faith in every situation. Amen. So I said, wait a minute. That's how Papa does that. That's how my dad does that. He stands and believes God. You know what? And God comes through in his life every time. I, I think I want to serve God. Because God's always come through. So you live, you're living A legacy of faith for others to follow. Let me close with this. The word of God enables us to walk above and through the storms. In Matthew 14 is the account of Jesus coming to walking them on the water in the midst of the storm. And the way we win is through the wisdom of the word of God. If you have your Bibles, go quickly to Proverbs chapter 24. I'm going to read a verse to you here. Proverbs 24 verses 3 through 6 says this. A house is built by wisdom. And become strong through good sense. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. The wise are mightier than the strong. 
and those with knowledge grow stronger and stronger. So don't go to war without wise counsel. Victory depends on having many advisors. So get the right kind of instruction. Amen? And Proverbs 24 and verse 10 says this. If you fall under pressure, your strength is too small. King James says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength was small. And so Jesus said storms are coming, but he told us how, how to have the strength to stand and not fail. You see, wisdom is our protection from presumption. So what do I do? Do what Romans 4, 17 says. Begin to call the non-existent things as if they already existed. Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is not seeing what is in the natural, but seeing what is in the covenant promise of God. You have a covenant with God. And that covenant includes provision in your life. Then calling it forth in your life and in the lives of others. Not just for you, but call it forth in the lives of those around you and those you're connected with. Faith does not dis- deny the storm exists. It speaks the provision and promise of God for victory through the storm. Faith stands. And having done all, it still stands. Amen? Amen. So Peter was walking on the word of God. So Jesus is there and, and he comes walking away in, in Matthew 14. Peter says, Lord, if that's you, ask me to come. And Jesus said, come. I'm here. Now listen, listen. What was Jesus walking, I mean Peter walking on, water or the word? Good to see you, Alex. God bless you. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Jesus said, come, and Peter was walking on the word of the Lord that said, come. He was walking on the word, not on water. He was walking on the word. That's what you're called to do is to walk upon the word. Walk upon the word. Amen? Amen. Now what? So Jesus was walking on the word. Peter was walking on the word of Christ that said, come. The storm existed, but he was not focused on the storm. He was looking at Christ. As long as his focus was on the word of God, he walked above the storm. The moment he took his eyes off of the word, he focused on the storm and sank. Never take your eyes off of the word. Never take your eyes off of the word of God. Faith knows that the word knows that the word is what enables me to walk above the storm. My faith says the only way I'm going to stand, the only way I endure through this situation, any situation, is because the word of God is my foundation. Amen? Faith is founded in the word, and the word is a foundation that supports us in the storm. It takes more than just simple faith, guys. It takes more than just simple faith. Faith in faith will not produce. Our faith is pure faith when it is built on the foundation of God's word. Bill, can you come back, please? Hallelujah. Never let go of the word in the midst of your storms. It's your strength in the day of adversity. It's your anchor in the storm. Keep holding on. You're building a legacy of faith. Coming today, being here today, is a declaration, and I applaud you for it. It's a declaration. I believe God in my life. I believe worshiping God, I believe being in His house is the best place I can be. Amen? The best place I can be. Father, today we thank you. Lord, we come today in honor of you. Father, we humble ourselves before you. And again, we begin to lift up our nation, our world before you. Father, your word says as you looked out, Jesus, as you looked out upon the world, that they were sheep without a shepherd. Father, our nation has turned its back on you. We've become a corrupt nation. we passed immoral laws. We've devalued life in the womb. We've made personal choice a higher priority than life. Father, we've sinned greatly as a nation before you. But Lord, today we humble ourselves before you to cry out for our nation. To pray, Father, that you would move by grace. Father, it's always been by your grace. We have no merit. We have no value. We 
definitely have no righteousness that we bring before you. When you move in our life, it's always by your grace and by the nature of who you are. That you so love the world that you gave your son. That if we would believe upon him, we would not perish, but have everlasting life. So, Father, I pray. I don't know how you will do it. And I don't want to even attempt to guess. But, Father, I pray that by your grace, you would move through this season of calamity in our world. And that you would give us the wisdom on how to move in this season of opportunity to declare the gospel. God, that we would be sensitive to the opportunities daily of those that are without hope. Lord, Peter instructed us that we would always be ready to give an answer for the hope that we have. Lord, our world is void of hope. And we have the answer. We have the antidote to hopelessness. Father, I pray for an outpouring of your spirit upon your people. Of courage and boldness. Lord, as they pray in Acts chapter 4, Father, that with all boldness we may speak your word. So, Father, I pray that by your spirit you would begin to move upon hearts and lives of your people. With a fresh courage and a fresh boldness to share the hope that we possess. And Lord, today we just pause to say thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for our covenant with you. We thank you that we have an anchor and we have a foundation that cannot be moved or shaken. And Lord, we thank you that we can have peace in the midst of our storm. And Father, we pray that as we walk in peace, Father, as Paul prayed in 2 Corinthians, that you would cause our walk to be a walk of triumphant procession. That as we're walking in the victory and the triumph that is ours in Christ, that we would be diffusing the aroma of victory. And others would be attracted to the aroma of your presence. And we could share the hope that we have in Christ with them. So, Father, we thank you for the harvest. We thank you for souls. And, Lord, again, I just speak peace to this storm. In Jesus' name. Father, again, be with our doctors. Be with our scientists. Be with all of those in the healthcare profession. Father, we thank you. You will use medicine. You will use every tool. But, Father, let it be seen. That God is your grace, it is your help, it is your provision that is bringing it to pass. And we just give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor for this day. In Jesus' name. Amen? Come on, I want to do one thing. I know we got a couple minutes, but could we sing that song, Oceans, one more time? Can I get the whole band back up here? Could we do that? Is everybody still here? That's just such a powerful declaration. And I will call upon your name when oceans rise. Come on. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Come on, just stand. Now just begin to thank God right where you are. Begin to thank God right where you are. That you have a foundation. You have a hope in Him. That your life can be anchored in Him. Secure in Him. Safe in Him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As they're getting ready, pray this with me. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. I've surrendered. I've given Him my life. Not just as my Savior, but as my Lord. I declare Jesus is Lord of my life. Today, I thank you that I am safe, I am secure, 
and my life is firm on the foundation of your word. I am an overcomer. I am victorious. I'm covered by the blood. I'm sealed in the promise. I'm delivered from fear. And I'm at rest in peace in Jesus' name. Come on, if you agree, give God a good praise. Amen.